thrilled to welcome Annabeth Albert to the podcast. Annabeth grew up sneaking romance novels under the covers of her bed. Now she devours all subgenres of romance out in the open. Complex, sexy, and funny stories are her favorite, both to read and write. She loves finding the happy endings for a variety of pairings and is a passionate gay rights supporter. In between searching out heroes to redeem, she works a rewarding day job and wrangles two children. Her latest book, Wheels Up, which is part of her Out of Uniform series, came out on November 6th. Welcome, Annabeth. Hi. It's great to have you with us. Um, we'd love to hear all about the new book, Wheels Up, and, and about the Out of Uniform series in general. So this is one of my favorite books that I've written, and it was actually one of the hardest books that I've written. And it stars Dustin, who's the older brother of Dylan from At Attention, which was book two in the Out of Uniform series. And Wes, who's an enlisted SEAL, and it's an officer enlisted forbidden romance. And it has the SEALs in action a lot, which readers have been asking me, when are they going to really get to see some action? And we get to see some really nice action in Wheels Up. But it's also the emotional journey of the officer and the enlisted um, their kind of arc that they go through. And what makes it your one of your favorite books? I just really liked Dustin and Wes, and sometimes the books that are the hardest to write end up becoming your favorite after a while because you spend so much time with them and so much time in edits, and then by the end, you're really proud of what you've created and so this is one that i really worked on and so i'm really proud of what we ended up with after edit and, and let's dig in a little bit there what made this so so difficult and, and forced you to work harder on it well when you have an officer and an enlisted person there's fraternization rules that come in and i do like realism in my book so i went to a lot of research on this I consulted three different attorneys. I consulted people that were in the service that had formerly been in the service, getting a variety of different opinions. I looked at message boards on this, trying to get a variety of different opinions about the fraternization rules and how it would actually play out for them to get to that happy ending that we all want for them. And so the amount of research that this book took was definitely on the high side for me, but I loved it. And Wes is an explosive expert, and so I had to do a lot of research about his role on the team, what he'd be using, what he'd be doing, the sorts of missions that the explosive expert would be needed in. And so that was really fun, just the amount of research that I needed for him. It almost sounds like you had to do more research on the relationship and how that would play out than actually sending your SEALs into action almost. Well, so the first part of the book was all the research about the seals in action and that research. Then towards the end, it was like, okay, we've got to get them to a happy ending. We want a happy ending. It's a romance. And so no spoilers there. But I want a happy ending. And getting that was a challenge because the fraternization rules are real. I didn't want to just hand wave and, okay, sparkle magic dust and everything's fine. So it, it was a challenge to get to that happy ending for them. That sounds like a, a, a satisfying author journey in the long run. It really was because I felt at the end that I was really able to balance the realism with what these characters needed. And I just finished um, what, what will end up being book six in the series. And we get to see them again, the Wheels Up characters. We see them in, in the background of this next book. And I really like where they've ended up. They, they're just, they're, it's like, oh, wow, they're a really cool couple now. So I'm, I'm happy with, with where it went. Six books is really impressive. Uh, I'm curious as to what, what sent you down that road of, of Navy SEALs. What was your inspiration for Out of Uniform? Well, so the series as a whole is my chance to look at the post, don't ask, don't tell military. What does mm -hmm. it really mean to be a military family right now today? How do things like toxic masculinity play into things? How do people cope with long separations and uncertainty? And a lot of my inspiration, I owe a huge debt to Suzanne Brockman and her SEAL series. And I have a funny little story about that. 11 years ago, I broke my foot, and I had never read any military romance at that point. And a friend gave me a huge box of Brockman books, and I just became <laughs> a huge military romance fangirl. But 
I was kind of waiting. I'd, I'd done a lot of reading of other people's military romances, but I was a little bit nervous about doing it myself. Could I really do the research and stuff? But then I wrote Ryan in Connection Error, and I just loved it. I loved doing the military hero. I loved doing the seal. And so I went to my editors at Karina Press, and I said, I really want a spinoff from Gamers and go the military direction. And they loved it. And so it's kind of a leap of faith for them and for me. And we decided to try and make the series. And not every book in the series is a coming out story, which I really wanted. I wanted to kind of show what it means to be out and openly serving in the military today and what the family side really is, the people who stay at home, the people who are waiting, the long separations, that sort of thing. Awesome. See, I'm going to have to read these now. Will's read the... The first one or the second one? I've read the first book in the Out of Uniform series uh, a couple of, I think it was a couple months ago now. Uh, I highly recommended it to everyone on the show. Um, what really, um, what really surprised me is um, as I was reading the book, I had a, a, a difficult time with it. Not because uh, I didn't like it, because I actually, in matter of fact, I loved it to pieces. But I thought your your main navy seal character the sort of journey that he was going through with being in the closet and being comfortable with what is essentially his very first relationship was um it brought up a lot of stuff uh, frankly uh in my own coming out journey and i remember all that anxiety and um angst about being in the closet it was very very real so um, I, I thought that first book in this in this particular series was really exceptional. Oh, thank you very much. Now, this is not your only series. If I counted right, you've got five in play. How do you look among those and decide where to go next? Well, so they're not all active. So Portland Heat is done. And Perfect Harmony, that's the music books, they're done. And I still play in those universes um, with little thicklets and shorts for my readers. I love doing little like revisits, epilogues to the epilogues sort of things. But other than that, per Portland Heat and Perfect Harmony are done. And then Gamers is pretty much done, but I've got a connected novella coming out this spring. And then Gamers will be kind of done, I think. So then the active series right now are Out of Uniform and Rainbow Cove. And what I do is I make a big calendar in Excel with my deadlines. And I just kind of look and I see, well, who has deadlines when and where can I squeeze different books in? So at this point, it's very deadline driven, not as much, well, what does the muse want me to write today? But um, which I know is, the muse would be a much better answer, but it's very deadline driven. And in um, 2019, I'll be part of another series. I know that seems far away, but it's rather close in writing time and I'm going to be part of a new series a shared universe at Riptide and that should be really fun I just I love series I was going to ask you that you, you do seem very attracted to series writing because everything seems you have very few standalones what what I don't really do standalones I'm going to do a standalone <laughs> next year and that's very unusual for me and already I'm seeing I'm like well maybe it could be two books <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I love, and this is what I love about the reader, too, I love a group of friends or a family or a family of choice, depending on, you know, sometimes friends become like family, and I love growing their whole universe. And I get, inevitably, as I grow their universe, I meet more people who need happy endings in whatever variety that ends up being, and I love giving them the happy endings. And then I like when we have the series and we can see hints of the earlier couple and see how their life is developing. Did they buy a house? Did they move in together? You know, we get to see the earlier couples kind of how they're developing too. And I just, I love that. And I like being able to use similar set pieces like locations throughout the series because then you really start to develop a sense of place. Okay, we're in the diner again. Okay, we're at the tavern. And you really start to get a feel for the location. What's kind of your process as you're looking at kicking off a series? Do, is it really just starting with book one and seeing where that goes? Or do you plan out four, five, six books down the line to know how everything's going to interconnect? I usually do three at a time. 
I do three books. I, I kind of can see three books down the line. And what I like to do is kind of start with that group of friends or the people that know each other. And how how's that core group fit? Who's the who's kind of the focal point of the group? Who's the loud mouth? Who's the comedian? Who's the shy one? How are those personalities playing out in the friend group? Before we even think about happy endings for people, just how's that friend group functioning? And then usually one story will kind of come to the forefront that, okay, that's going to be book one. And I really dig into book one. But as I'm writing book one, I know who book two and book three are going to be about. I'm kind of laying the seeds for those books in book one. And so to me, this is really fun because the nature of the friendships and people's friendships in general are just really interesting. to me. Mm -hmm. Do you have kind of a sweet spot on where you think series should draw to a close or... Is it just as long as the ideas keep flowing? Well, Out of Uniform will be at seven next by the end of next year. And I'm really going back and forth as to whether seven's going to be it or whether we could go on a few more. As a reader, I know that after seven or eight, I get really um, kind of as a reader, you, you're like, oh, well, do I need to reread the previous six? Do I need to go back reader fatigue is a real thing mm -hmm. and so like i don't i don't see it going to like 12 or something um and you know so i have to kind of think both as a reader and as a writer as a writer you never want to let these books go <laughs> you know i i could have done 20 portland heat books but as a reader between six and eight maybe 10 feels good for a series some of these long series that have 15 16 17 books to me, that gets a little long. Mm -hmm. time, time to try something. Now, you also do co-writing with Wendy Qualls. Uh, how's the co-writing experience been for you? So, it's she's my critique partner, and we're also best friends. And we started as an experiment because we wanted to see if our styles would mesh. We wanted to do something super fun. So we went to our to my reader group and we said, here's some character arc to archetypes. What kind of jumps out at you that you'd like? And so my reader group picked that they wanted us to do a virgin rocket scientist and an army guy. <laughs> and so it, it was just it was it, so it was just fun. It was just totally it was going to be a freebie. It was going to be 15,000 words and it ended up being 40,000. But um, and it was it was really fun and rewarding. It was challenging working it in alongside other projects. I tend to be very much a one project at a time sort of person. But um, but it was still really fun. And save the date is still free at all the retailers. And it was nice to be able to bring that to my readers and to be able to write with my best friend. That was really fun. Was it scary at all having the the character types? presented to you well we did it as a vote and actually it was fun it was very free it was okay we're gonna just have fun with every trope we love with this story and it, and it ended up being the length that it wanted to be and it was just it was like okay you know let's just have fun with the wedding weekend trope and these characters and it really was a fun book to write and to that end do you what what are your favorite tropes to work in or to read for that matter Oh, I love tropes. I am a huge May-December relationship fan, both in my writing and in reading. If you want me to one-click on a book, May-December does it. I love friends to lovers, particularly best friends to lovers when they're in love and they don't know it yet. I love that one. Um, I like forced proximity when they're you know, snowed in or trapped together in some way. I like that a lot. Um, I think was I haven't done Secret Baby. Um, I don't usually read a lot of Secret Baby, but I said that about forbidden relationships, and then I went and I wrote um, Wheels Up. So, you know, sometimes it's fun to try tropes you don't use very often and just see, well, what could I do playing in this sort of universe? Mm -hmm. You certainly hit on one of mine that I like a lot these days, and, and doing May December. I really, I've gotten kind of into finding those stories and reading them. I love Tender with a Twist that came out in October of mine is May, December. And I really like 
doing a hero who was a little older, a little more settled into his skin. And so right now my work in progress is a book that'll be out next Christmas. So it's a Christmas book that I'm writing this Christmas that'll be out next fall. And it has a 46 year old hero. And I'm just like, this is so much fun. It is so much fun to be in a more mature person. I love my younger heroes too, but I'm finding I really enjoy the mature point of view right now, being in that character's head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So going back to your beginnings, what got you sneaking those romance novels under your covers? Okay, so this is kind of a funny story. My grandma had boxes and boxes of old school 1970s and early 80s Harlequin under the bed in the guest room. And I would go and spend the night, and I'd stay up all night, like till the sun came up, reading all the books underneath the bed. And so I got really good at borrowing a few to take home. And then I'd bring them back at the next visit and take another three or four. And then I found out that the library had them too. And that was kind of a game changer for me. And I was just always the kid that would read long after the lights were supposed to be out. I had flashlights. I had other little lamps. I went through batteries like crazy because I just I, – I couldn't put a book down until I had read the whole thing. And I liked the length of the Harlequins because I could read them pretty fast. But, yeah, I was just – I was hooked from the start. Can you remember what some of your uh, favorite titles were from the early days? I can so I was a huge fan and before I found the Harlequins of the typical teen sort of romances. Judy Bloom, Norma Klein, loved Paula Danziger's stuff. But then when I found adult romance, I read a lot of the very early Laurie Foster's, Catherine Coulter, Sandra Brown, Julie Garwood, Linda Leo Miller, and just, you know, the sort of the icons of romance. I got a really good education in them. I read all sorts of genres, contemporary, medieval, time travel, historical, romantic suspense. I think people often think, oh, you love the Harlequins, you just read the category romance. But I read pretty widely among all the different subgenres, and I just, I was in love with the genre from the first book. Does that early reading play into ha- to, into your storytelling now? I think it does because I've read so widely. I know what pacing kind of works for me. I read a lot of craft books too. I love reading about how to p- plot and how to pace and stuff. But I've read so many other books that I'm able to kind of draw on it. Okay, in this book, they had the midpoint hit right here, and then they had the dark moment, and then they resolved it this way. So I'm able to kind of see how others pace things. Mm-hmm. And that worked really well for translating it to my own writing. And also, I know what it means to get lost in a story. And, you know, the characters you fall in love with, that it's the little details. And I know that in my favorite stories, it's those little details that really stand out to me. So I try and make sure that I, I hit those notes in my own work. So, yeah, I think reading definitely has helped me as a writer. And what got you into to reading gay romance? Was there a particular book that turned the corner for you? or There was. So, well, Suzanne Brockman had several um LGBTQ subplots in mm-hmm. her long-running SEAL series. So I had already read those. But then it was 2011 or 12, and Dream Spinner had a special going on to celebrate their anniversary where you could download a free book. And I had just recently gotten my first e-reader. And I was looking for free legal books that you could get. And so I went to Dream Spinner's website. And I downloaded Marie Sexton's Promise. And I had a baby at the time. I stayed up all night reading Marie Sexton's Promises. And I was just hooked. I was totally in love because it was a romance that was, and it had a happy ending and on page love scenes. And I started reading, I started by reading everything of hers I could. Then I moved on to a bunch of other people in the genre. And by the end of the first like couple of months, I had spent so much money on the genre. You can really see the free books make a difference. (laughs) (laughs) that was one free book and then i i went nuts on the purchase so it was it i really i owe a lot to marie for how amazing that book was in terms of how it influenced where my life went after that any particular favorites these days authors or particular books well 
so um, I think that, you know, I read voraciously and a lot of different authors inspire me. I talked about Brockman and Lori Foster and Jennifer Cruz. He's another early influence on me. But today I look at things like L.A. Witt writes her military series and I love her tattoo artists. I love the realism that she brings to the table. She's constantly inspiring me in terms of my own writing, how I want to bring that realism. I want to make sure that my heroes have that good of detail. And I love like Amy Jo Cousins and Santino Hassel for their world building. They have the long running series like I do. And I love seeing how they pull their characters from book to book and how their world just builds. And then I have other authors that I love for like the pacing and the characters like Kira Andrews and Lita Blake. Um, they just do amazing with in terms of character growth. And then, um, am arthur she brings the angst and i love how she does she makes me cry every book and i love that <laughs> so but yeah i read very wild very widely the book that i read most recently that i loved was kira andrews kidnapped by the pirate and i wasn't sure i was gonna like it but um because pirate romances the last pirate romance i read was probably 92 or 93 but i loved it it was so good I haven't read that yet, but I love the cover. The cover is amazing. The writing is even better than the cover. Well, I, and it's long, too. It is long and meaty, and they <laughs> really get the relationship in it. Well, it's funny that you mentioned Kira and A.M. Arthur. I, I literally just finished um, books by the two of them, uh, and I read them for the very first time, and I love them to pieces. And um, Kidnapped by the Pirate is definitely at the top of the TBR <laughs> for uh, 2018, most definitely. Have you read A.M. Arthur's Be Us series? That was one of the first, um, the triad books that I really loved. And her um, Sound of Us is, and then there's two other books starring that same trio. I really, really like that. I recommend it to anyone who's a little on the fence about, you know, trying the polyamory thing. But the male, 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 it, it really works. She is just a master of the emotions. Mm -hmm. I just read her um, her most recent title. Uh, her, she um, tackled her very first cowboy romance. Um, ah, Wild Trail. That's on my list. I get to read that this weekend. Yes, I was absolutely gaga for that one. It's amazing. She is just, she brings the emotion. So in terms of like people that inspire me, yeah. like I consider her a friend too, but just when I read one of her books, I'm like, that is the kind of emotion. I want to make people cry. I want to make people laugh out loud and wake their partner up when they're reading. <laughs> I, 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 I want to bring the emotion. So I, I read and it often really inspires me to up my game. Like how can I reach that same level? You mentioned reading across so many subgenres between some of those early books you were reading and even into today. Are there genres that you want to tackle in your writing that you just haven't done yet? My muse seems to only bring me contemporary romance. I've asked if it wanted to bring me a historical <laughs> and, it, and I, my husband and my, um, late father would love it would have loved it if i would have done a sci-fi he wants me to do space assassins <laughs> um but i just i love contemporary romance even though the world we live in is big and problematic and things happen that we don't really like but i just i like seeing real world people get their happy endings and my hat goes off to the historical writers that can do that much research to get their details right. Like KJ Charles, I love her stuff, but I'm just not sure I could pull it off. I don't know. From hearing all the research you just did, I think you'd at least be able to do the research if your muse would bring you the characters. Yeah, if, I, if I could get a character, I think I would, I would go down that path. And it's interesting how sometimes, you don't know until you try something. Like A.M. Arthur just mentioned, she wasn't sure that she had ever tried anything outside of contemporary romance, and then she decided to try her hand at the Omegaverse, and now she's got a four-book series in the Omega world of paranormal stuff. And so that's kind of, you know, you never know. Sometimes your muse can surprise you. So maybe someday my muse will bring me that historical. There you go. So what's on your docket for 2018 that people can look for? 
have a lot. So um, in March, I'm part of what's being used as the Secret Naked Project hashtag, which is also an anthology. It's got a lot of different authors in it, and the cover reveal is coming up this week on the 18th, and you'll learn the whole slate of authors that are involved, and it's called Exposed. And we're really, really excited to bring you this, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And so that'll be a novella of mine that's with the other entries in the anthology. And where, then in, oh, where will people be able to find that cover reveal on the 18th? Um, the USA Today blog. Okay, great. We'll, we'll link to that blog so people can look for that. I'll, I'll let you keep going with your list now. I just <laughs> want to let people know where to go find that on Tuesday. On, on, what, I think that'll be Tuesday. Yeah. So um, in April, I have Squared Away. It's another seal book. And this seal um, was is really fun. He inherits three kids and their attractive older cousin. But um, he, it was my first real asexual hero. And so I really enjoyed the research again for this one. And I found some just amazing beta readers who worked with me on this book. And I'm tremendously proud of it. And I can't wait to bring that out in April. And then in July, we'll have another seal book, Tight Quarters. And that one has an embedded reporter and a seal. And that was a lot of research on embedded reporters. And that was really fun book to write. I just wrapped that one up. What I'm writing right now will come out in November as Riptide's Christmas books. Riptide does the Christmas charities every year. And so I'm doing a Christmas book for them. And that's what I'm writing right now. And then there'll probably be some other books coming in 2018 too. I'd like to go back to Rainbow Cove and we'll see when those books end up coming out in between those other releases. You are busy. My goodness. I, I try. And you, you've got a rewarding day job stuck in there, too, so that kind of release schedule is impressive with the day job going on. Well, I just I find it all works with, like, scheduling. My kids are now in school, and so they go to school. I get to work. Certain days I do my day job. It's not a 40-hour week. And certain days of the week, I do that. Other days, I write. And on the writing days, I try to make a lot of headway so that on the days that I can't write, I can just focus on the day job stuff. That's nice. That That's awesome. Keep, keep that up. It's inspirational to me as I keep dealing <laughs> with my day job. <laughs> well, and, yeah, I used to work more hours. And I found that just doing something Every day makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, is, that is so true. So what's the best way for people to keep up with you online? Facebook, I'm very active on. I have the Annabeth's Angels Facebook group, and we love getting giveaways going. That's where I do my thicklets and my extras. We love getting new people to come by. And But you can follow me on all sorts of other kinds of social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram now, too. But in terms of interaction, I love people joining my fan group, the Annabeth Angels group. Okay, very cool. Well, Annabeth, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great getting some time to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>